I like to learn new ways to save money. I mean, who doesn't like some extra cash in their wallet? But I wasn't always the most frugal, minimal, or intentional shopper. Actually, quite the contrary. So in honor of my 29th birthday this month, I took some time to reminisce and look back at how far I've come and remember all the stupid financial decisions I made. So today, I'm going to be sharing with you my seven most dumbest purchases that I made in my early 20s. So if you've made some financial mistakes in your life, don't worry, you are not alone and there is hope for you yet. But before we begin, it would mean so much to me if you would consider giving a thumbs up as a birthday gift to me. It really helps my channel out a lot, so thank you very much. And right off the bat, let's start with the most embarrassing one to me. Number one is a gas stove. And what's wrong with purchasing a gas stove, you might ask? Well, maybe the fact that A, you don't have gas, and B, you don't have a home to put it in. Yeah insert slapping face emoji right now. The story behind this one is because it was a good deal. My husband and I were engaged and we did not live together before we had gotten married. And so come Black Friday, we were out shopping for all the things that we thought we were gonna need. And there was just this really good deal at Best Buy that if you bought the refrigerator with the stove and the microwave, you got this like awesome deal. I could, I could not pass it by. I had to save the money, right? And so we ended up purchasing the combo. We ended up renting. That location did not have gas, actually came with the appliances, so we didn't even need the refrigerator. We kept it because we liked it. And so we had two refrigerators at that location. And then we ended up having to sell that range stove, losing money on it even more because by then it had expired on its warranty and people, people didn't trust that it was actually not used. So yeah, that was stupid. At that time, I had not learned the lesson that you save 100% of your money if you just don't buy that good deal. Lesson learned. So I work as a registered nurse, but when I started off, I was a cashier and I was making almost minimum wage at $7.50 at that time. So when I graduated and I finally got my nursing job, my pay tripled to $22 an hour. And you better believe I had some lifestyle creep. At that time, I was driving a pretty car. It was a convertible Mitsubishi Eclipse, but it had problems. It would stall on me. I had to constantly be taking it to the mechanic. It leaked on the roof, and so I needed a new car. In my mind, I thought, I'm making this long commute to the city to work. I need a reliable car. And what better than a brand new car? I ended up financing a brand new car for $23,000, $23 something. And when I ended up selling it back, I got back $13,000. I lost $10,000 in depreciation. Plus having that monthly payment meant that I was making less money to save at the end of the month each month. So it was just a very dumb mistake. Looking back, I should have just purchased a car that had been used, that had already had most of its value depreciated, and then I wouldn't have that monthly payment. So yeah, that was a very dumb mistake. And speaking of lifestyle creep, unfortunately my purchases did not stop there. As a nurse, I worked 12 hour shifts. And even though I worked overtime most of the time anyway, that really meant that I was working three to four days a week. And so I found myself with extra time because I didn't have kids at that time. My husband was out working and I had a new home to decorate. And so unfortunately that meant that every day that I was off of work, I was out in the home decor shops. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you that there must have not been a single day that I was off of work and I was not out shopping because it was fun. And I needed to decorate my home. I must have spent hundreds upon hundreds of dollars on home decor. And I'm not even talking like furniture pieces. I'm just talking about little decor items, like little wall signs and things like that. Because I had 10 pillows on our bed. I kid you not, I counted them. We had table runners of different colors that had to match the candle colors, that had to match the vases, that had to match the flowers, the plastic fake flowers, and all sorts of things that I would swap out with each season or every few weeks because I wanted to just give a refresh. Oh my goodness. It is insane the amount of stuff that I had just to decorate the house and I had them boxed up in a closet so that I could swap them out continuously. It was a never ending cycle. It was excessive to say the least. And this is where it gets emotional. I had a relationship with God at that time, but I still had some wounds that I needed to heal. I had been deeply wounded and used in the past and I felt a deep desire to feel 
worthy, to feel valuable, to feel beautiful. And I had purchased so much clothing, so much makeup that I'm saddened by this because at that time I had no idea of the effect that my purchases were causing on not only the environment, but the people behind it all, the exploitation of workers. I had no idea that people's lives have actually been lost in bloodshed because of fast fashion. I will forever be grateful for the documentary, The True Cost, because it changed my perspective on fashion dramatically. But at that time, I had over 30 dresses, and I was actually proud of that because I had one dress for every day of the month. I had a huge makeup chest that had all sorts of things with contour palettes and fake lashes, all sorts of lipsticks. I had a huge assortment of nail polish, and my clothes actually took up two closets worth. Now that I think about it, I probably spent thousands on fast fashion. This one I'm very ashamed about. I purchased real human hair extensions for almost $500 because I wanted more volume. Tell me why. Why does a girl that has hair to her waist need hair extensions that were probably purchased from someone somewhere around the world for a miserable amount of money just to get by so that I can feel pretty. You see, at that time, I did not love myself. I had been abused and I felt and believed that I was unworthy. I believed that I had to earn love and I believed that if I failed at something, then I was a failure and I was unworthy of love. And so I felt as though I had to put on this persona, put on this mask of perfection, that everything I did and was, was perfect and wonderful and that my life was perfect and I was perfectly happy. I was trying to fill a void within myself, but you see, I was approaching it from the wrong direction, from the outside in. But in reality, what I needed to do was peel away those outside layers, remove the falseness, uncover that mask, expose my broken heart so that I could heal from within and thus love other people and in loving other people, loving myself even more. On a lighter note, joining some sort of a martial arts class is very much on my bucket list when I can afford to not work full time, but I spent hundreds of hundreds of dollars, no, probably thousands of dollars on aspiring sports equipment. I purchased boxing equipment, a treadmill, and other things that I rarely used. I take that back, I did use the treadmill, but I find that I get a lot of value from just simpler things like hiking, going for a walk, or doing a HIIT workout on my yoga mat in my living room. For now, that is all that I really need. And believe me, we did not get back the amount of money that I spent on all of that. You live and you learn, you guys, you live and you learn. <laughs> These next two things were actually gifts from my husband, but I include them because it's not his money, it's not my money, it's our money. And I know that he purchased them because he knew that I wanted them. And that is an Apple Watch and a Michael Kors watch. I love the style of the Michael Kors watch. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I enjoy its beauty. I also really like the style of the Apple Watch that I had, but they just no longer represent who I am and what I want from life. Since I've embraced the concept of minimalism and slow and intentional living, I just no longer enjoy wearing flashy clothes and jewelry. And especially when it comes to technology, I want to feel that I am using it. And there's just something about constantly being attached to that watch that made me feel a slave to it. In recent years, especially in my work as a hospice nurse, constantly working with people who are at the end stages of life, I have come to value my time so much more and I long to savor the moments that I have with my family, with my friends, with my patients, with whoever I am around, that I can really be present. And so for me, it's important to be able to detach completely from technology. But for me, I think it's a much healthier balance to be able to put my phone away and it's not uncommon for me to leave it in a cubby, leave it on a shelf for hours on or even the entire day. And I wasn't able to do that with my watch and it just, it didn't make me feel free. It didn't make me feel like I had that ability to be present because it was buzzing. It was constantly trying to grab my attention. And so these sorts of things just no longer work for me. I actually ended up gifting the Apple Watch to my mom who really does find a lot of value from it. And I think that this just goes to show that just because a purchase that I made was a mistake for me doesn't mean that it's the same for you or even vice versa. I think that it all comes down to making sure that the purchases we're making are intentional and that they add value to your life so that this way you can not only have more money, but have more time for the things that truly matter most to you in your life. 
So there you have it. Those are my seven worst financial decisions that I made in my early 20s. There are probably more, but maybe next time we can talk about these smart ones. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you won't miss when I post a new video. I thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to hear from you in the comments. Until next time, bye.